What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here for another episode of Cultivating Kindness with Karen. And of course, I'm Karen Leslie. I'll be your host for the next hour or so. And we've got lots to talk about today. As always, right? I mean, I really, I really enjoy showing up with you every week. I really enjoy that you come and you, you sit, you listen, you walk, whatever you may be doing while you're tuning into my show. And I, the fact that you are there and the energy that you bring is such a contribution to myself and to the Inspired Choices Network overall. And I just ask that we be as much of a contribution right back to you. Mm, really kind of started heavy on a lot of energy talk. We're going to be talking about energy a lot this week. Today's episode is going to bring it in in many different forms. The topic for today, does your reflection ever surprise you? So if we're talking about a reflection, which I'm looking at one right now, I'm seeing myself in my computer as I'm speaking to you, then energy really is definitely needs to be part of this conversation, at least from my perspective. You know, that's what a mirror is, right? It's that reflection. I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when we get into things later in the show. But we've all understand or we've all know what a reflection is. We can see it in a mirror. We can see it in a window, you know, on a still, calm lake or body of water. You know, um, any surface really has the ability to show some form of reflection. And as to how clear it is or how distorted it is, really depends on a number of different factors. But it really all comes down to energy. So have you ever walked past a mirror or a window? Have you been in a, a shopping mall and you're walking by and something catches your attention and then you think, oh, wow, is that me? Do I actually look like that? Or, wow, I'm looking really good today. Whatever your thought may be, when you get that quick reflection, that quick flash of your reflection as you're going by something. This happens all the time. It's really a question of, are you paying attention? Did you notice yourself walking by? You know, we, we can enjoy these experiences much more than I think we actually do. And I think most often a lot of people will have a response of like, oh, all right, and just keep on walking or, or turn and do not look at the mirror or look back at the reflection again. And I think that's sad. I think we're missing out on something. So hopefully by the end of the show today, you'll have a different perspective on this. And when you see your reflection somewhere, maybe you're going to ask a couple of different questions, or maybe you're going to embody what that reflection is showing you in a new way. And I wonder what that can contribute to you. Mm. We'll have to wait towards the end to find out. So either way, Right? Reflections are all around us. And it truly is a choice as to whether or not we wish to see them, work with them, or ignore them. You know, uh, a picture is a, a physical representation of a reflection, you know, taken with a camera. And I remember, oh, I don't know, like zillions, can I use that? Is that a real word? zillions of times like so many times throughout my life looking in a group photo and and it doesn't need to be like 16 or 25 people like you know five or six people and often not even seeing where I am in the picture 
Has that ever happened to any of you? Like I need to look, oh, that's my piece of clothing. Okay, there I am in the picture. I was so disconnected from myself and my own energy that I, I wouldn't see myself in a picture. You know, recently, we, we moved recently, as, as many of you may know. And one of the things that we were packing was uh, our wedding pictures. We had had a flood in a previous house and the album got wet, but none of the pictures did. So I was able to pull them all out and save them, which was great. But I had never bought another album. So I decided I wanted to get them in an album before I moved them, just, you know, to protect them. And I'm going through and I'm looking at the pictures and uh, a couple of um, the girlfriends from my of my sons were there and they had never seen them before. And so it was kind of fun and they were kind of giggling as to how their partners looked when they were young. Um, or sorry, not their partners, my husband's brothers looked when they were younger and everything because they, you know, they know them all now. And, uh, but as I'm going through, I was seeing me very differently than the last time I looked at the pictures, which was when I was pulling them very quickly out of that wet album. And it made me pause. Like, these pictures have not changed, and I've looked at them many times over 42 years, but I saw myself differently. So we're going to explore that a little bit today as well. So even a picture of you that you have seen many times can change how you view it, what you see within that frame of that picture. All based on energy. So we've got a couple of different ways to look at this. I'm hearing a, a few different ways um, that spirit would like me to um, explain all of this to you. So let's look at, um, all right, let's look at a mirror. We're going to dive right into this. A mirror is probably your most common place that you would look and see your reflection. Many will feel that this is the truest reflection that you could look in with the least amount of distortion. You know, a, a window in your house at night, you know, depending on the lighting, you can see yourself in it. Or as I said earlier, you know, walking through a shopping mall and you can catch your reflection in the window of a store. You know, if, if you're looking into a pool of water, even if it's very calm, our reflection will be quite distorted and changed. So let's look at the mirror. When you look in a mirror and what you see, who you see and what is also accurate is very, very dependent upon how you last looked in that mirror. This may sound strange, and we're going to get very much into the energy and the uh, different ways that I work with energy here now. So a mirror, even though it's a reflective surface, a mirror will absorb or hold information and energy. That may sound strange, and that's okay. One of the things that happens with a mirror is that, well, it seems to have a, a unlimited capacity for how much it can hold. And so when you look in a mirror and you criticize yourself in any way, you don't have to say it out loud. It's just that thought because, right, that's the energy and it flows, it comes out as well as, you know, going into the cells in your body. The mirror can hold on to that. So the next time you look in the mirror, there's a high likelihood that you will see your brain will interpret that same flaw or criticism that you thought the last time you looked into it. Is that truly you? 
or have you somehow manipulated the way your mirror functions? Very few people are going to have thought about this before. Vast majority of you are going to go, what the heck are you talking about? Okay, it's all energy. And the mirrors, as I say, can hold it. And oh, what was it? Four years ago now, I think. <laughs> Sounds awful that I may not know in this moment. Um, but uh, my son uh, got married uh, at the end of June. And my daughter-in-law-to-be very kindly invited me to go with her, uh, her, her mother and her grandmother to pick out her wedding dress. I was really surprised. I didn't expect this invitation, but I was thrilled. So I went, right? It was great. Now, the very first thing I did when we were assigned the dressing room where she was going to try on the different gowns, was I cleared the mirror she was going to be using to look at herself in these gowns. Why? Because that mirror was holding the information that was given to it by every other bride that stood there before she did, as well as anybody that was there with the bride looking in the mirror so they're facing it and they're looking at it as well, critiquing, perhaps criticizing, you know, what they're seeing. Now, of course, there were brides there and people with them that were like, oh, that's gorgeous. You look amazing. But most brides go through multiple dresses before they pick the one. So there's this series of comments and emotions, perhaps frustrations, perhaps anger, or like just deep sadness. Even if it's a beautiful experience, if that bride's there, but her mom or her grandmother or someone special in her life is no longer living and can't be there, or is, you know, across the country or something or across the world, there's that other whole other set of emotions that can be put forward into that mirror. So I cleared the mirror. I got rid of those emotions and any of the entities that were hanging around in that space so that it gave her as mm, the greatest possible opportunity that I could create for her to truly see herself. And then when we were done and she picked her gown and everything was great, I cleared it again as a gift for the next bride that was going to stand there and see herself. So kind of a long way to get around and saying, okay, mirrors, and you know, they have a real uh, distorted view of, our, of ourselves for reasons that most of us don't know. It's not because the mirror is old and the the backing in the mirror is starting to go. It's not because there's a crack in the mirror. It's not because you're tired and your eyes aren't seeing as well. Those all can impact our reflection, but there's this whole other realm that impacts it that we're not aware of. So some of you are going to believe this, some of you aren't, and then some of you are saying, uh, okay, now what do I do with this? Like, so I don't want you feeling afraid of your mirror. <laughs> I don't want you to throw all your mirrors out. Totally not necessary. But this is all information so that you can use your awareness when you're looking in a mirror. So what you can do, and it's very easy, is you can just, you can, you can state out a command. You don't need anything fancy. You can use fancy words if you want to. You can call upon any of your religious texts or words if you wish as well. But you can just simply command that all entities or spirits and all of the emotions and thoughts that have been projected onto and into this mirror 
leave now. And then I would flow waves of kindness into the mirror with the intention of waves of kindness going through the mirror. Yes, it's physical, but it will go through it with the intention of it removing all energies so it is clear, clean, and like recalibrated so it's there just for the person who's going to look into it. Now, this isn't as much of a worry you know, it's not even a worry, but as much of something to look at when you're in your home and, you know, it's just you looking in the mirror or, or a couple other family members. But even then, it's always a good practice every now and then, even if it's only a couple of times a year, clear the energy in your mirror. Right? Just whatever words come to clear out all of the emotions and thoughts that are being held in that mirror to leave now and for this mirror to be clear, clean, and recalibrated for you, right? I used to have um, a clinic I worked in before I, I started only doing online work. Um, the people in the clinic often would say, hey, can you come and clear my mirror that they had in their rooms and things? And, and uh, I kind of enabled it. I never actually really said to them, okay, you guys know how to do this, do it yourself. But, um, you know, when you start to do this, you will, you will feel the difference when you look in your mirror. And wouldn't that be lovely? So we're going to carry on with this conversation. It really took a different direction. I was saying just before we started to my producer, Sarah, that uh, this entity conversation really wants to be brought in today. We'll see what happens. Well, there it is, <laughs> right out of the gate. There's so much more to talk about our reflection. And does it ever surprise you? So we're going to go for a break. Please don't go away. We'll be back just in a couple of minutes. And we'll carry on this whole conversation about how to work with your reflection, what your reflection could be telling you, or even what is your reflection hiding from you? All right. We'll be back in just a moment, everyone. See you after the break. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. So, I'm glad you're back. <laughs> I was thinking, wow, I hope I didn't uh, say too much there that made people think, okay, I need to turn off today. So thank you for still being here with me. It's uh, such a pleasure to share with you new information. And yes, as I've said, sometimes it's going to challenge you. And that's okay. It really is there. And I'm sharing this so you will think about things differently. I mean, this whole idea you know, of cultivating kindness is to look at it from a new perspective. 
to change what your thought patterns have been and the habits that you have and the kind of the robotic way that we tend to go through our life. And it all fits into every single area of our life, even your reflection, even looking in a mirror or walking by a window or a cool and calm piece of water. It's amazing how when you change how you look at something, it opens up new doors, new opportunities, new ways of actually living. So just think about that. In the first segment, right? We talked about the mirror and it holding energies. I gave you some ideas on how you can clear those energies out. So if you've just joined, you know, later, go back and listen to the first part. But knowing this now and knowing that you can change it, if you would like, what does that give you? What new opportunity is there for how to work with your reflection? To how to work with how you see yourself? To work with this energy that you're putting forward. So if you do choose to clear your mirrors, maybe then stand in front of it. Just pause. Just be there. How does it feel? Can you notice a difference? If you practice it, I really do believe that you will in time. It may take a little time, but you'll start to notice it. And then you'll start to notice, oh, okay, this needs to be cleared. I need to clean up this mirror. And not so much with, you know, Windex or whatever you may be choosing to use. Energetically clean it and clear it. When your thoughts start to go back to being critical of yourself or judgmental, or you just look and then you just go away, like you actually don't look in the mirror. Those are all signs that something's building up within the mirror. Those are all signs that you're not actually connecting in with yourself. And that's what I all want for all of you. We need to be connected within our bodies. We need to be aware of our thoughts, the origin behind them, and then what we choose to do with them. Do we keep repeating them? Or are they ones that we need to let go of? There is, um, yeah, there's so many different ways that we can be can be looking at this. Um, all right, before we go up to the break, I was saying that we could look at the our reflections in many different ways and work with the in different ways. And I said, you know, sometimes our reflection can be hiding something from us. Sometimes our reflection can be showing us something that we are choosing not to see. This is all part of, you know, is what you are seeing actually true to what is there? Now, I'm going to go from this point on, assuming we're working with a mirror that's nice and clear and clean and recalibrated, and it's all cool. But when we look into, no, hold on, I'm going to change that. Okay, let's go back to the shopping mall. Or if you walk by a mirror, but you, you see a reflection and it surprises you. And you, you turn and you look and you go, oh, that moment where it surprised you, where you maybe didn't recognize it was you, or you thought, whoa, is that me? There's so much information there for you. There's a ton of information for you there. We should, in theory, always be able to recognize ourselves. Right? I shared with you that that wasn't the case for me quite often. In theory, we will always know when we walk by something that that was us, that was reflected, that was you, that was Karen, that was reflected in that surface. So why would we have moments where we think, wow, is that me? 
Do I look like that? <laughs> Did I leave the house dressed like that? <laughs> like whatever it might be for yourself. You no, know, or hopefully it's the one that's like, damn, I look really good today. Look at me. Right? Both the more critical and, and the positive are both giving you information. They're both letting you know that you really aren't connected with you. That you are choosing to maybe be on autopilot, that you're choosing to ignore something, that you are choosing to not be present. And as I've mentioned in the past, when we're not present within ourselves, that's when we open up an opportunity for accidents and a whole slew of other things that really are not a contribution to us. They're like the, you know, the uh, two by four to the side of the head saying, hey, get back here. So what could you be hiding from yourself? What could you not be wanting to actually see in your reflection? For many, it's going to be the judgments that they carry about themselves. It can be physical features, you know. It didn't bother me when my hair started going gray, but I do know a lot of people, men and women, that like that, whoa, that's a problem. So seeing gray hairs come through, that can be a problem. That can be upsetting. We could be not happy or comfortable with how our skin is showing up. Do we have maybe blemishes or a lot of dark spots coming through? You know, wearing glasses or not wearing glasses. Like it can be anything. And we can criticize this. So that can be a way of us not wanting to connect and look into the mirror and see those things. Now here's where it works really well to do some inner work, some self-work, and to understand why are you choosing to be so critical? Why are you choosing to be in comparison with another person or a whole group of other people? Because we wouldn't be criticizing, you know, if we wear glasses or not, if we weren't aware of other people who either do or don't. Or somebody said something to you that you have taken in and held on to that is making you uncomfortable in some way with the glasses that you require to wear to see well. I mean, as one of my sons said to me once, he said, I don't, he wears glasses. And he said, I don't understand why people don't want to wear glasses. Why would you not want to see well? Why would you not want to see better than you can without them? And it was mind boggling to him. When I started wearing glasses, it was like, oh, cool. My body actually really wanted to wear the glasses and to have something different going on. But not everybody is like my son and myself. So when we're comparing, when we're looking outside and we're judging against somebody or something else, we're gonna find flaws. We're gonna find it easy to criticize. Is that what your reflection is telling you? Is it giving you that daily or multiple times a day dose of self-judgment, of being unkind to yourself? You know, and then we can have the other side of things. We can actually not want to see something that's actually really wonderful. Yeah, truly. Now you may go and get a haircut and really like it and look in and go, oh, okay, this is great. And you see the new haircut and you think that's fine. And that's why I look great in the mirror. But maybe it's more than that. And maybe you aren't ready to see these changes in you that are bringing something else forward for yourself. We're going to go to our break in just a moment. And we're going to finish that topic when we get back. I'm going to kind of leave you thinking about that. What could it be that's very positive in your reflection that you are not ready or willing to see yet? 
What could that be that would surprise you if you were to truly look and receive? Hmm. Likely you have not asked yourself this question before. It's a really important question. So when we get back from our break, we're going to look at this and, and see if we can come to an answer for why we would ask that question. So thank you so much for being here on Cultivating Kindness with Karen and joining me here on the Inspired Choices Network. If you're watching live somewhere and you would like to jump, jump in and come into the chat room, please do. I would love you to be here and you can join the conversation for the second half of, the, of our show today. But thank you. And don't go away. And as I say, we will look at what's that positive side that you aren't ready or willing to see yet when we return after this break. All right, everyone, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for being here with me. It's so fun to be here and talking about your reflection. And does it ever surprise you? You know, I've been caught sort of off guard by mine many times. And in all honesty, it's been happening again a little more often lately. And yes, that means that I really need to be more aware and uh, making that choice to be more present in my body when I am passing by or looking in a mirror or some kind of reflective surface. The surprises that I have been finding are what I want to talk about more now with you. You know, on the other side of the break, I was saying, so what if there's something, you know, positive that you aren't ready to see or acknowledge or receive that energy of when you look in the mirror? There are numerous people in, that work with helping us find greater compassion or kindness for ourselves, or you could call it self-love or self-care that will encourage you to look into the mirror and look like right into your eyes. So with such focus that you don't actually really notice any of your features around your eyes, you're just looking into your eyes. Seeing the color, has it changed? Seeing the, the lines or the dots or the various colors and formations in your eyes. That's an easy way to start because it will take your focus away from like going deep into looking into your eyes, but it will help you get used to looking at your eyes. 
And then you can move forward into looking into your eyes. And when we do that, you give yourself the opportunity to connect in with yourself, maybe in a brand new way or in a way that you haven't done for a while. When we allow ourselves to connect like this and we, we pick that focal point of the eyes, we're starting to actually work with creating new neural pathways and working with the small chain peptides and all these other things in the brain, which I'm not going to explain in, in detail today. But what side of this I want to bring to your attention is that when we gaze at ourselves in the mirror and we allow ourselves to connect, we can be shown energetically or physically different aspects of ourselves that may be uncomfortable because they are so kind, because they are so loving because they are so pure and you may not be ready to receive that. Especially if you've never cleared your mirror, then you are going to be working really kind of against the tide, so to speak, with the information that's held there. And there's this new information that is longing for you to receive it. When we can look into our re reflection and be without judgment, that's such a win. When we can move into looking into our reflection with kindness, with appreciation, or with love, that's a whole other level. And often, Many people aren't ready for that. So that's one of the positive gifts that can be there for you. That I would wholeheartedly encourage you to work towards being able to receive that. Now, this may require doing some inner conflict work, inner child work, uh, working with past traumas or abuse or things like that. Absolutely. That type of uh, energy work and coaching work, which, which I do a lot of, is such an amazing accompaniment to being able to look into the mirror and see and receive differently. Now, one of the, um, it's not a difficulty, that was what was coming through, no. One of the changes that people will see when they do work on themselves, when they do this inner work, mindset work, whatever you choose to call it. But when you are, especially when you're adding in energy work with it, the cells of your body change. Your neural pathways change. The chemical structure in your body will change. And what this all does is it changes the vibration that you, that you have within and around your body. Now, this vibration, as it rises, as it speeds up, if you'd like, it carries with it a different way of being within your physical body. And this is one of the reasons why when you look in the mirror, that reflection, it doesn't quite make sense because you could be looking for that energetic pattern. Even You don't even need to know what, it, what that means, but you're looking for a familiar point of how things were in the past. And that's not you anymore. You've changed. A major life event can, can create this within you as well. You know, going back to um, the brides that I talk, talked about in the first segment, you know, assuming that this, the weddings that are happening all the time, that this is filled with love and uplifting and excitement and people that feel so good about themselves. 
and they maintain that and they stay within that loving energy of themselves and then with their partner that can change how they see themselves in their reflection and learning to be comfortable with these changes is really important because if you if you don't if you don't figure this out you're actually going to go back to where you were you're going to go back to those thoughts that were more comfortable you're going to seek out some of those judgments again and you're just going to refill that reflective surface with this way of thinking about yourself our energy is always shifting and changing right i've said before it cannot stay static it's always moving always changing now here's where you come in which direction would you like it to change do you want it to continue to rise and lift some will say feel lighter or are you okay with it sliding back down a little bit being a little bit heavier maybe being a little bit more judgmental or just kind of yeah yeah things are fine it's all up to you the energy will follow the thought pattern you choose to have and this is really where I have had times when I've looked in the mirror and I've gone oh right <laughs> and I look more carefully I'll pause when that happens now and I'll look at my reflection and I'll see okay who is this I have been changing so much over the last number of years there was a big change seven or eight years ago when all the suicidal aspects of me left and that took some real getting used to and then more recently over the last couple of years there's been another big surge another real change in who I am energetically based on the work I'm doing for me for Karen and it's caused me at times to again not recognize who I am and what can also happen is this energetic signature, so to speak, that we have around us all the time. When it shifts, other people cannot recognize you the same way as they did before. And you get odd, kind of strange comments sometimes. They could say, oh, did you, did you get new glasses? Is that a new haircut? Where nothing like that physically has changed, but they're looking to the physical body for an explanation as to what they are perceiving as being different. Now, they are unaware that they are actually just energetically aware, and how cool is that? And they're also showing you that you've changed energetically. And are you going to allow yourself to be aware of that? and to own it continue with it or is it too uncomfortable that the person that they're perceiving has changed so you may want to go back to who who creates the energetic signature that others know it's all a choice what i really really want what i would love for all of you is that you have that opportunity to recognize and be in that place to ask those questions. Would you like to maintain this? Do you want to stay with this? Are you maybe not ready for it? Okay, but then again, why and looking and working with this, would you like to go back to that what's more comfortable? And understanding both sides of it, right? There again, that coin with two sides. So if you wish to tone it down a little what's behind that or if you wish to stay or even turn it up what is behind it thinking that one answer is more positive or more correct than the other and that if you choose that one then there's nothing else you need to do 
is not correct from my perspective. There's always opportunities for us to be asking more questions and understanding in greater depth and detail about the choices we're making, about the thoughts we're having, that personal agenda that might be there with it. And it's no different when it comes to looking at our own reflection. No different when it comes to understanding our own energy that we're carrying within us, within your eyes, and all around you. All right. We're going to go to our next break. I think this is a really good time for that, just to kind of sit and settle with you. If you have questions, please send me an email. You can find me at karen at karenlesley.ca. And that is L-E-S-L-I-E -E for Leslie. You can also find me on all the different social media platforms. We can connect that way if you like, and we can begin a conversation and I can help you out with what it is that I do. Or just if you've got a couple of quick questions and you just need a little bit of guidance, I'm happy to share that with you. So reach out and uh, let me know if I can be of any assistance. Today has a lot of really new concepts in it for many people. So if you want a little more information, then get in touch. You know how to find me. It's really easy. All right. So we will be with you in just a couple of minutes. We just have a little bit of a break here and we're going to see how to wrap all of this up for you so that you may be able to choose to look at your reflection in a different way and maybe a way that doesn't surprise you quite as often as it has in the past. All right, don't go away. We'll be right back. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back. Here we are, our last little segment of Cultivating Kindness with Karen. It's gone so quickly. So before we went on th that little break, you know, I we were talking about your energy changing and the impact that that can have. And it's, it's really, it's very simple. It, it, <laughs> to me, anyways, it's very simple. When we go to work on ourselves, when we do something to improve ourselves, to make ourselves feel better, in whatever way that may be for you, it has an energetic impact on who we are. It will make you feel different, hopefully in a good way, a positive way, however that's going to look for you. And then that shifts everything around you. And that can result in seeing your reflection in a new way, a different way, and perhaps even a startling or surprising way. Now, that is never a bad thing. It is never wrong or it's never like silly. Like, how dumb is that that I didn't you know, recognize myself? No, there's always information there for you. There's always that opportunity to ask a question, to gain more insight and understanding. Now, I didn't say this earlier, but when I did look at the um, etymology for the word reflection, it talked about, it says, a reflection is literally, and this is in quotes, uh, bending back, right? It's referring, and this is back, you know, from the um, 1300s bending back so it's talking about light how it bends back and when it bends 
there's some level of distortion. Understanding this is really important. Know that when you look in anything that's ref a reflection of you, that it's only giving you a partial true reflection. There's other elements going on that can be a cause of some portion of your reflection being a distortion. When we understand that, we can be hopefully less critical, less judgmental when we see ourselves in a, in a mirror or in a, a picture. When we understand the energetics, this gives us a huge opportunity that most people don't have to change our perception about how we see ourselves. It gives us permission to change our mind, to change those thoughts, and to work with them, and to work with you from the inside so that you can see and understand this reflection in a new and different way. To be open to seeing, yeah, some things that you may not like. If a spot comes up on your face or somewhere on your body, you need to know because maybe that's going to require some type of care to help that area heal. So those are important things to see. You'll only see them if you spend the time and allow yourself to look. If you are always just glancing and moving on, you miss so much. You could miss something important, like understanding a change, like the cells looking different. You miss that opportunity to connect in and feel your energy in a way that may be new and hopefully in a way that you like and you start to do all the time. It's fine for your reflection to surprise you. It's fine for your reflection to give you new information. And it's fine for you to ignore it, but I would encourage you, play with it, check it out. What could your body and energy be telling you and sharing with you that you really can only discover through your reflection? through your willingness to receive and change how you see this reflection, right? There's so much there for you, so much there for you. All right, before I forget, next week, we are going to be talking about let fun be your guide. Ooh, there's so much there to share with you next week on that. So as a preamble to it, and maybe a little bit of getting yourself ready for next week's show, what if you could have more fun with looking at your reflection? Maybe dress differently, maybe put on a hat or something in your hair, something you wouldn't normally do. Have fun with it. Make it a game, enjoyment. And see what that does with your comfort with looking at your reflection. Look for ways to surprise yourself. Look for ways to be kinder to yourself. Allow yourself to gaze and see who you are. Look at your posture. What is your body saying that maybe you have been ignoring? So much information today. Please go back and listen to the show maybe a few times to gain a really great, greater understanding of the importance of our reflection. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. 
Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.